Leah, where do you see the field of consciousness studies going? Where is it today, and how would you project forward 10, 20, or more years? So I don't want to risk making any gambles of any sort. You know, that prophecy was given to the fools. But still, uh, I do see or recognize some interesting trends that I'm hoping would take the field forward. So one is more team science. I think that people are understanding more and more that consciousness is such a huge problem that it probably won't be solved by one person or one lab. And if we collaborate, especially if we collaborate also bridging over different points of views and bridging theories, then our chances of finding a, an answer are higher. So that's one trend that I, I find interesting. Another is interdisciplinary, which relates to that. So if you are willing to engage in more interdisciplinary dialogue, I think that your chances of solving the problem are also higher. Um, another interesting trend is to try and study consciousness in the wild, quote unquote, in the sense that we've been working with very elegant and well-controlled paradigms where, for example, I can bring you to my lab and present a stimulus to you, and sometimes you will see it and some, sometimes you won't, and all the physical conditions would be identical. And that, is, that has generated a lot of knowledge, but one can question how much of that knowledge actually is relevant to everyday life, conscious versus unconscious processes, where we walk down the street and we process a huge amount of information and some of it we are conscious and some of it we are not. It's very different from those paradigms which are somewhat artificial. Again, brilliant. I wish I could have invented one of those and well controlled, but take us somewhat further away, I think, from what we might be interested in actually studying. So for example, we have paradigms where we present a different image to to each eye, or we represent a stimulus for 17 milliseconds, and that doesn't really have a parallel in everyday life. So I see different attempts to study consciousness in a way that is more similar to what's going on outside the lab. How can you literally do that, though? Because there's so many variables and so many metrics that you don't even know. Right, so luckily we have, we have now some technological advances that help us do that like virtual reality, where you can now create a very rich environment and still control the you know, critical factors of it. Um, you could also, there is brilliant work in my opinion by, from Rafi Malach's lab, where they just looked at blinks. So what happens when you blink? Your conscious experience persists, but the upcoming visual information is stopped. And nature has created this beautiful contrast between just information processing and upcoming information and your conscious experience. So if you try to do that, that could also get you into some interesting contrasts that mm -hmm. are not created by some manipulation, which again, I don't think that we don't need to do those studies. We do them all the time in my lab. But I think that alongside this beautiful line of work, we should also explore other ways to study consciousness. And what would some of those other ways be? So we mentioned virtual reality, we mentioned tracking um, um, some natural phenomena like sleep or blinks or other uh, related uh, um, paradigms or ways of thought. You could also look into things that are relevant to everyday life in the sense, for example, of decision making. So a branch of um, consciousness studies relate also to the role of consciousness in decision making. And here you can see very interestingly that with respect to free will or the question of volition, it seems like we have been working in two different, uh, f in, within mm. two different fields. So one would be the field of, of, of free will or volition, where they try to study the role of consciousness in decision making, but always, or at least almost, or maybe more accurately, almost always with meaningless decisions. Yeah. So you sit there in the lab and you move your finger, it doesn't make any difference. And you have neuroeconomics, which is focused on meaningful decision making, but doesn't really care about consciousness. So now if we bring those two fields together, you could also study the role of consciousness in meaningful decision making, which we also try to do together with Uri Maoz, and find some interesting results. So that, that, those are very interesting extensions of consciousness. They don't necessarily feed back and tell you the fundamental essence of consciousness, which is a, a separate study, but it, it shows the breadth of consciousness, neuroeconomics, neuroaesthetics is another field that's very similar in style to bring a new way of thinking about the aesthetic experience without taking away from the 
the, the, what it feels like to enjoy art or, or, or music. Yeah, I think so. the more we study consciousness, the more we realize that it pertains to many related questions and also to the question of detecting consciousness in different cases, clinical cases, through development, animal consciousness, AI. We live in an in a era where these questions are becoming more and more important, and I'm hoping that the field of consciousness would be uh, instrumental in also solving those.